Hi guys, welcome back. Not in the garage this time, but next to it. And I spoke about before about giving the bike a deep clean and ceramic coating. Obviously, I can clean my bike, but not up to the standard that uh, a proper detailer can. So we've called in an expert. Where? Where? <laughs> How are you doing, guys? You're right. This is uh, this is James from Shiny Side of Valeting. Absolutely. Uh, and he's going to go over my bike, give it a good uh, looking over, clean it, and give it a nice ceramic coating. Well, the good news is it's not in bad condition to start with. You obviously look after it quite well. Um, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, gets lazy sometimes with the cleaning. Well, uh, people like you keep me in business, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> That's no problem. Um, so yeah, I mean, the first thing we do is uh, obviously have a good look over the bike. We make sure the bike is in uh, relatively good condition. And as we're looking around the bike, we are looking for safety things as well. So we look for screws, anything that may be loose or anything, just to make sure that the bike's in as good condition as possible. Yep. Then we look at the obvious things, the things that get the most gunked up, the most greased up. So the chain, the sprockets, the front sprocket, and of course where the chain lube does naturally drip down as it gets hot anyway. So we kind of um, look at a, a basic kind of idea of how we're gonna do things, work on some sort of a, an action plan, if you like. So the first thing we're gonna do is give it a good uh, rinse down. That's gonna get rid of any of the, the loose contaminants that are on the bike, any sort of dirt, grime, grease, anything that we can just remove with a, a nice gentle flow of water. Then we're gonna decontaminate the bike as best we can uh, using various degreasers or, or some of the chemicals that we use, which I'll gladly show you in a second. Um, and then we go into more of a detailed process. So, uh, so yeah, it's, I mean, I'll try and talk things through as we go and, uh, and show you a few tips and uh, tricks of the trade. Excellent. But, uh, but yeah. So depending on how dirty the bike is, will that depend on what kind of cleaning product you use on it? Yes, absolutely. We, we always try and use as least aggressive as possible for obvious reasons. Bikes are very, very delicate. There's lots of delicate areas, for example, the chain, the spindle, the seals on the bike. So we'll always start with the least aggressive as possible. Excellent. Obviously there is some kind of uh, tar and, and, and glue and, and that sort of stuff that, that the bikes naturally pick up as they get hot and as they ride along um, so we will need to use different chemicals as we go along i can see we've got a little bit of tar and, and contamination around the engine and the spring uh, and, and the places of the engine they get really really hot but yeah. that's completely natural and we've got various uh, methods of of getting around that as well without further ado let's uh, let's start the process off we're just going to give it a nice rinse down uh, with just water to start with and then we're going to start adding some chemicals on as we go So yep. just to give you an idea of what I've done there for you. So this is what's called a mixer tap. Uh, brilliant bits of kit. You can get them from some hardware stores or uh, Motivator themselves actually produce these as well. Um, so the idea is you first of all do the water, rinse the bike down, get rid of any of those contaminants, then turn on the actual solution. So what we're using here is concentrated bike wash. I use Motivator for a lot of my products simply because it's completely salt free. Now that is a big, big thing with bikes. Salt is an absolute killer for bikes nowadays. So having something that's salt free is a big, big plus. As well as that, it's completely pH neutral, non-acidic, non-alkaline, which a lot of bike cleaning products are, um, and completely biodegradable. So it's not gonna ruin the driveway, the fishes, the trees, all that sort of thing. So really, really good. And there's no contact time. You haven't got to worry about how long it's on the bike for. So really good bit of kit. Oh, that's good. With, sort of, like, with some products, you sort of like put it on, leave it for 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and to be honest with you, any <sighs> little tip, I suppose, any product that says uh, it's got contact time, I would completely stay away from. So either put it on the bike, leave it, uh, re re remove within three to five minutes. Sorry, I, that, that shows to me that it's aggressive. It's going to start affecting things if you do leave it on. And what if you rinse the bike and leave a bit on there? It's just going to start affecting it. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've all seen those bikes that have gone white or streaky. That's unfortunately those sort of products. Seeing how good it is, we're probably going to change the concentration a little bit. Just so it comes out a little bit thicker. But because I class this as a pre-wash, it's absolutely fine for what it is at the moment. Uh, right, I will say something very quickly. A lot of people worry about using pressure washers on motorbikes. Uh, rightly so. Pressure washers can be very dangerous, especially if you don't know how to use them or where to spray them. Um, if in doubt, the biggest thing I'll always say is make sure you've got something that's got a variable nozzle. So this has actually got interchangeable nozzles on. This is what's called a, a quick, uh, quick connect version. Uh, I'm using one of the widest settings, so it's not a direct pressure if you like on the bike um, you can change these very easily i've got different settings and everything in there but also stand far back okay because essentially a pressure washer yes it's pushing water out but it's it's actually the pressure of the air that can push the water into where it needs to be rule of thumb i say is if you can put the pressure washer on and have your hand in front of it and it doesn't hurt you're doing the right thing okay. i have my hand there all day it doesn't hurt at all 
Um, that's one key. And then what we're going to do now is the solution we put on there has started to break down the bits and the bobs on the bike, uh, break down the dirt, the grime. We're just going to rinse away the majority of that there and then we're going to use the detailing side of things and head on to the snow foam. Cool. What a great way to spend your day watching somebody else washing your bike. Well, you have a brew. Oh yeah, rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned there about the jet wash because that is something, even when people say to me, do you jet wash your bike? I say, absolutely not. Don't, don't put a jet wash anywhere near your bike. It, yeah. But it, obviously it, you proved there that it's not necessarily right. Oh no, it, it's, uh, I, I understand why people say it. And, and to be fair, if you are in doubt, yeah, don't use it. Running water is absolutely fine. If you're using the right chemicals, then running water, is all that you need. You don't need high pressure water. High pressure water is only good if you are removing, you know, you're against the clock or if, you've, if you're confident in where you're spraying it. So as long as you're careful, as I say, on the spindles, the seals, the chain, you would be absolutely fine. Okay, so what we uh, what are we putting on here then? Okay, so this is the first stage of the drive chain cleaner. Um, this is, uh, again, Moto Verde. I've just taken the label off because it was all dirty. Um, Moto Verde drive chain cleaner is a degreaser, but it's designed specifically for chains. Now, this is designed for modern day chains as well. So what it's going to do, it's going to sit there. It's, it's not a thick solution, but when it comes out, it does foam up slightly, as you can see. And that's designed to sit there, sink into the actual uh, chain lube, the grease, the wax, whatever you may use on the chains break it down uh, and again with this there is no contact time so the longer you leave it on there the more it's going to break it down uh, and the more it's going to allow itself to to come off quite nicely we're going to leave this on there for about 10-15 minutes or so which is more than enough um, as i say there's no contact time so you can leave it on for as long as you really want to you can go make a cup of tea if you want to um, but yeah leave it on for as long as you want it breaks down the chain loop we're going to use a normal chain brush just to agitate it get off as much as we can and you'll see well even now it's starting to come off really yeah, easily yeah. which is fantastic and hopefully all this area here where it's quite thick here actually you can see it's already starting to break it down very very quickly so that's brilliant so yeah we'll come back in for 10 minutes and we'll give it a wipe <laughs> Come on, this way. You are a pain. I love it. I love it. Come on in, Millie. Come out of the way. Right, I'll give you a little hint for you. Um, the chain brush is one of the most common tools people use to obviously clean their chain and everything. However, uh, people use it wrong. <laughs> it's, it's the only way to say it. So the chain brush has obviously got three sides to it. I use the chain brush facing that way initially here so at the bottom of the chain and that gives a good way to clean both the in the inner links that go around the sprocket and the outer okay so you're doing it there then what i would do is bring it around to the back of the sprocket and then use it the same way so that the actual angle's coming out but you're actually putting it on and pulling it that's going to clean the outer of the, the chain links there so by doing there and there you're cleaning all four sides of the chain that's a really nice way of, of doing it and make sure you go over each link two, three times before you move on to the next one. Don't just put it on and spin the wheel because all you're going to do is bend the bristles backwards and it's not actually going to clean anything. And so I'll be honest, that's probably exactly what I would have done. Oh, so, well, a lot of people do it. Yeah. A lot of people do it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, of course, the chain brush has two sides. That side, that is the forgotten side of the chain brush. Uh, people just ignore it, forget it, don't use it. Why, I don't know, because that is absolutely brilliant. They're plastic bristles, so they're not going to scratch or anything like that. And once it, all the chain lubers are emulsified, as we said earlier, you can use that to go over and really agitate all the different areas around your nuts, your bolts, the actual hub carrier, the sprocket itself, and it's just going to move it around. We're not trying to remove it at this point, just agitate it. Obviously, you can add as much of this as you want to as well. Go over all your swing arm, and of course, where we mentioned earlier that there was going to be a bit of a build-up around your side stand as well. So all we're doing here is agitating it and moving it off the bolts, off the nuts. Add as much of this as you want to. And once you've gone over enough that there's not really much build-up anymore, we're going to be ready to rinse it off and add the snow foam. Right, okay, snow foam. Um, snow foam initially started as a bit of a gimmick, to be honest with you. So when people say that they're gonna snow foam the bike, they had these fancy lances and snow foam liquid. And it was a gimmick because it just, it looked great, 
but was it really doing anything? Honestly, probably not. Nowadays, snow foam has been developed for detailers, for valeters, for general car washes to do uh, what it was, what it, what the great thing is, is designed for. So the snow foam has foaming agents and things in it. Um, the, the cleaning concentration is a little bit less, but the great thing is because it's, it's thick, it stays on the bike for longer, it doesn't need to be as powerful, it doesn't need to be as aggressive. So by putting it on the bike, it's nice and thick, it stays on there, it draws off the gunk, the grime, the, the whatever is on the bike that shouldn't be, loosens it and allows it to drop off. A little bit of high pressure. This is uh, quite a good snow foam lance. And uh, yeah, well, you'll see in a second how uh, how white it goes. Okay, so now we've kind of uh, cleaned it, decontaminated it, we've now dried off any of the excess water, we can see there's a little bit of the, the plastics that are starting to go that little bit grey. It's completely normal, all it is, and, and the way that we've, de we've done it and decontaminated it, we've removed any oils, any polishes, any waxes, we've removed anything that's, that's not the actual material itself, and that's exposing the bare plastic. Plastic over time will go grey, simply because, um, as I say, any of those oils that were on it initially, they've started to come off. So now what we're going to do, by adding the protection to it, we're actually going to enhance the look of this and return it back to that glossy um, black plastic that it should be, so it looks new again, which will be good. Okay, so what we're doing at this stage now is we're going to add uh, the seasonal protection to the bike. Now, although we're doing the ceramic coating to the majority of the areas of the bike, there's a lot of the areas that the uh, we, we just simply can't apply the ceramic coating to, uh, either because of how we, we can't get to it, we can't apply it uh, if, if properly, or we can't remove the excess. So we're using this. Now this is XCP, they class it as a rust blocker, but it's a really, really good protection for motorbikes in general. Obviously we've got to be very careful where we apply it and how much we apply it to. Uh, so instead of using the cans, which you can do, I've actually got it in compressor form. So I've got it in, in here, uh, which I'm going to use with the compressor to apply to the engine, the swing arm, the nuts of the bolts, and we're also going to use one of the brushes to actually push it and massage it in and make sure it's a nice even coating all over. Now the byproduct of this is going to make the plastics look absolutely brilliant as well. It's really going to enhance it and make it look black again rather than the, the, the grey, and we can pretty much use it everywhere. Little top tip, I use this on the chain and sprockets as well. That stops it from oxidising um, and stops water from getting anywhere near it, uh, and so it enhances the life of the chain as well. So we're just applying a very, very fine coating. And then although it's on and it's been airbrushed on, we're just gonna make sure we push it into all the little nooks and crannies.
okay so what do we have here so after we're happy with the condition of the bike uh, first of all we wipe down the initial surfaces that we're going to use the ceramic coating on with a alcohol uh, or isopropylene alcohol uh, which basically cleanses it removes any fine oils or anything and any removes anything that may react with the ceramic then what we're doing is we've got our uh, pad with a suede cloth and our ceramic coating now the one we're using is the Autobrite Direct, uh, they call it the Ceramic Shield and this is going to give you a three year coating or three year ceramic protection on the bike. So what we're going to do first is prime the pad which is basically putting a few drops on the pad and that just gets it uh, stopped to being dry basically. Now at that point that's ready to go on the first surface and then after that point we just put four or five drops on uh, for each panel that we're doing. Okay. So I'm going to bring this over to the bike. Now, I've already prepared the surface with the, uh, the isopropylene alcohol and all I'm going to do is we'll start up here, just wipe it on. Now using the, the suede cloth means it's not going to scratch and using the pad gives us a nice flat surface to ensure the ceramic is applied evenly and it can be used on all these plastics, all the paintwork and everything that we see and everything that we prepared. Now once you've gone one way, then you go the other way, just making sure there's no what's called high spots or places where the ceramic is settling a little bit higher than it maybe should be. And by the time we finished this particular panel, we'll be ready to take off. I say take off, all, all we're doing is taking off the excess. So I'll leave that for a second. We've got two cloths here. First one, we're going to go in circles, massage the ceramic coating in and blend it into any areas that maybe we couldn't get to initially. and then use our second cloth to ensure it's all, all in. And then the process is repeated for every panel. Feel just like the back of your finger, just feel how soft that is now. It's so smooth. Yep. Yeah. You properly caressed that. Didn't I you? did. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sad day when a 50 year old guy caresses his bike and goes, hmm, that's nice and smooth. <laughs> Any last words, James? I suppose the only thing to go through would be aftercare. So now it's been ceramic coated. Um, ideally, what you want to do is let it cure for the next 24, 48 hours. Um, you can go riding straight away. I think you've already said you'd love to go out riding and I don't blame you, the weather's nice for it. Um, but don't get it wet for the next 48 hours or so. That's going to allow the ceramic to have the best possible chance of curing on the bike. Yeah. Um, and then aftercare, so when you do come to clean the bike next, you'll find that using a hose pipe or pressurized water or even a jet wash, 90% of the rubbish will come straight off it, which is great. So um, you don't need to worry about that. But if you are going to use any products, first of all, I'd say water them down. You don't need to use any sort of aggressive products or even even the gentle products water them down 
you know you don't need to use a lot of it um, chain obviously chain maintenance is important anyway so just keep on top of your chain um, I think you've already seen the chain video which I've done I did um, so that's that's a <laughs> link in the description no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but no that's it I mean the, the good thing about this is a three-year ceramic coating we've been able to coat a lot of the surfaces in fact more than I thought what I'd be able to which is great so um, you'll find that you just by wetting it down or when it gets wet you'll find that the bike will naturally stay cleaner for longer anyway so uh, so yeah any last words no i hope it's been enjoyable for you to watch and, and maybe learn a few things and it has like i said then. everybody can learn stuff and i have learned more things about cleaning your own bike um yeah get someone else to do it ex yeah. exactly exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> try and get it to do it for free though yeah <laughs> that's true i'm still working on that one <laughs> yeah so thanks for watching i hope this has been enjoyable um take care and ride safe <laughs>